Zombies, the bloodthirsty undead. When they arrive, when you survive, zombie go boom, kick undead ass. Hey, what's up, survivors? Welcome to another mind blowing episode from ZGB Prestige. I'm Chuck Murray. I'm Charles Fultz. And we are back with K Bar. Special thanks to K Bar. Without K Bar, this episode would not be a thing. And we're going to be testing out some zombie killers that you've seen before. If you're a longtime fan, I'm talking like five years, you've seen the Zombro. You've seen the War Sword, you've seen the Zomstro, but you haven't seen them against our new heads. And K Bar was ahead of the curve on the zombie craze, the green handles, they started that. 1095 Crowvan Steel, full flat grind. These things have done an amazing job on Zombie Go Boom, and I'm sure they're gonna do an amazing job today. We are super excited. You can buy the ones that we are holding in the links in the description below, or you can buy your own from K-Bar in the links in the description below. And if you wanna test them out yourself, just like we're doing, so you can see just how difficult or how not difficult this is actually in reality, you can get your own Tim Head, Ivan Heads, or Target Heads on zombiegoboom.com. This is gonna be a hell of a lot of fun. Stick around and let's get started. The Sombro The Death Dagger The Somstro All K-Bar All 1095 Crovan Steel All Full Flat Grinds All part of the Zombie Killer Collection And all ready to make a zombie go boom K-Bar Forever imitated but never duplicated now, K-Bar was the first company to help us out as far as sponsorships. They were ahead of the curve with the zombie craze, the green handles. They started that, except they have been forever imitated, but never duplicated in quality. These things are, in fact, amazing. And we're going to be stabbing with the Zombro. We're going to be decapitating with the War Sword. And we're going to be chopping with the Zomstro. Are you ready, Charles? I'm always ready. Let's get started. All right, so I'm going to be stabbing with the Zombro. But before I do that, I just want to show you just how sharp these things are right out of the box. And I'm barely going to slice the knife over. Seriously, that was very little pressure. And that is a ridiculous injury. And if you do not believe that our flesh analog is similar to real flesh, get one of these yourself and find out. Okay, now this is without me putting any down pressure at all. This is basically the weight of the knife. I'm starting here, see my fingers, and then I'm gonna slice. Wow. That's the weight of the knife. That's, that's it. That's, that's good. <laughs> Insane. All right, so here's my plan of attack. I'm going to stab as hard as I can, but instead of going for the temple or the parietal or occipital bone, I'm just going to go for the center of head, and that way, if I miss, I'll still hit the head because I want to stab hard, and the harder you stab or slice, the less accurate you are. Another thing I'm going to make sure to do is wrap my thumb around the pommel here, just put it back there, so that if I stab really, really hard, I won't slide and slice my hand off. Obviously, this guard is gonna help me out, but this thumb is gonna help me out too. Last thing you guys should know is that most of the force from my stab is actually coming from my hip. I'm basically doing a hammer fist. If you're a martial artist, you should be familiar with a hammer fist. Power from the floor all the way up to the hip and then boom and that actually makes you more accurate if I try to stab with just my hand I can go all over the place but if it's just my hip my arm is hardly moving at all and accuracy is a lot there a lot there a lot more there and power is a lot more there too <laughs> Oh, wow, nice, dude. I just told Charles, I don't think it's gonna go through because the belly is too thick, but, um, wow. yeah.
That went all the way to like here, which is basically <laughs> all the way to the other side. Holy smoke. <laughs> that is a kill. The thing that stopped it was the cranium on the inside on the other side, if that puts <laughs> it into perspective. That is one dead uh, zombie. Man, that's so awesome. And another thing, whenever I stabbed, I made sure that the blade was up because if it had been down, it would have been a lot easier for it to deflect and shoot up in that direction because of the curve of the belly. But this way, when I struck, it was able to hold on to the tip and allow the rest of the kinetic force to go into the head. I guess it's the Zomstros. Zomstros? Zomstros. It's the Zomstros turn. We're just gonna do a chop somewhere. We'll see what happens. Special thanks to all of you subscribers, and if you want to see ZGB Prestige on your feed, make sure you punch the living crap out of that bell button. That bonus. That's insane. That's what she said. Whoa. It's like an inch and I mean that's a kill. A whole inch. Probably. There's some argument that can be made about the frontal lobe not being a part of the brain that is absolutely required for life. But at the same time if the brain bleeds there's brain damage. If there's brain damage there's brain death. So, possibly, probably a kill. You want to do it one more time, just to, yeah. just to make sure? Yeah. All right. This time I'm probably going to aim more for this region right here. Ah! Dang. All right, let's check that out. Dang, man, that's some thick bone. That's what she said. Whoa. With this amount of brain damage, I think the zombie is probably. I mean, dead. the concussive force alone would probably move the brain enough to damage it, mm -hmm. you know, even if it didn't get through the skull. Yeah. That's a lot of force going into the head. Get your favorite zombie killing weapons at zombiegoboom.com. All right, you think it's time for that decap? I think it is. All right, let's get that war sword. Wow, so, beginning of decap, and then the blade turned on me. Could have been my bad, could have been my edge alignment, but that is a lot of bone. So it severed the spinal cord a tiny bit, which means that the zombie would be on the ground, and I would just easily be able to destroy it, especially if I stabbed it with the Zombro, but. Also, uh, I was gonna say, if you cut through all this muscle, even if you didn't cut through the neck bone, if you cut through all this muscle, the head's gonna fall forward and that zombie's not gonna really be able to control much of its body because it's not gonna be able to see because it's gonna be pointed right to the ground. Yeah, and that's not actually represented in our head analogs. However, we did make head analogs where they had individual spines and the neck could move around and stuff like that. But you're gonna have to watch that on Mythbusters. All right, let's just try it again. I was trying to hit the same spot as last time, but I, I didn't. I uh, hit a completely different spot. 
and uh, it went a lot deeper. And uh, that's why that blood started rushing out because it definitely severed the spinal cord. Like it didn't just cut into the spinal cord, it severed it and that was the blood that came out. <laughs> so as Charles was saying, and as uh, Emmanuel actually commented, the traps have been severed. So the zombie's head would actually be hanging from the first strike. And then either of those strikes severed the spinal cord enough to have the zombie on the ground. We're just trying to get a clean full decapitation, which is difficult with a blade this light and this thin, but I think another strike will do it. Nice! There, finally, three shots, and then check this out. This is how sharp all cave art stuff is. Damn! Oh, you know. Good job, bro. Light blade, but it does the job. Out of the three, though, who do you think is the winner? Man, that first one, that stabby. Yeah, that was I did insane. not expect that at all. The Zombro, that's one yeah. of the best and easiest stabs into a zombie head we've ever had, and not at all expected. Thank you, Emmanuel. And what's cool about this, and it's super interesting because it has a, a bevel, right? Uh, sort of like a saber grind, flat, and uh, for the for the actual bladed part. But then on the back, on the spine, there's a serration. But besides it being a serration, it's also beveled, and it's beveled here. But it's also a chisel grind. So this is actually like the weirdest and craziest serration I've ever seen. And yet. I mean, it cuts pretty nicely. Then again, you know, much sharper here. So this is more for, I don't know, utilitarian kind of bushcraft stuff. Anyway, you can use these blades for pretty much anything, obviously including, and not limited to zombie killing. If you wanna own the three that we have right here, there are links below where you can own them, exactly the ones that we are holding. We also have a link to K-Bar if you'd like to own a new, not used version. And first come, first serve. Also, if you want to find out just how difficult it is to do what we just did today, you can own your own Ivan heads and Tim heads at zombiegoboom.com. And with another mind blowing episode from ZGB Prestige, I'm Chuck Murray. I'm Charles Fultz. K Bar. Woo! See you next time.